Hello and welcome to EduSeries by Cycle Technologies. We present and discuss topics on family planning and reproductive health with experts in the field. This episode is an introductory training for healthcare providers on cycle beads, a tool for women to use the standard days method to plan or prevent pregnancy naturally. This is Ann Mullen with Cycle Technologies. Presenting with me is Kimberly Omag Yee, who will talk in particular about counseling patients on cycle beads. She has extensive experience in the field of women's health and is very knowledgeable about counseling patients on family planning, including the use of cycle beads. Hello, Kimberly. Thank you for joining me. Hi, Anne. It's a pleasure to be here. As a healthcare consultant in family planning, education, counseling, and training, usually within the context of all available methods of family planning, I've also had the opportunity to be involved in some of the operations research around offering cycle beads. I look forward to sharing some of those lessons learned during our training today. Okay, thank you, Kimberly. Well, let's first take a look at our goals for the presentation. So the training goals are that for the healthcare providers uh, to be able to describe what cycle beats are and what they're based on, uh, to be able to describe the family planning method that cycle beats is based on and how it works, to be able to counsel patients on cycle beats, and finally, we'll show you how to find further resources on cycle beats. Uh, before we go on, though, let's talk about what exactly cycle beads are. Uh, cycle beads is a tool for using a fertility awareness-based method of family planning. It's an easy, natural, and effective way to plan or prevent pregnancy. As you can see here, it's a set of color-coded beads that helps a woman track her menstrual cycle, identify the days when she could become pregnant, and monitor her cycle length to make sure that this method will work for her. Uh, here you see displayed the cycle bead schematic and the color coding. The basic idea is that each bead represents a day in a woman's cycle, and she tracks her cycle day by day. So starting at the top of the image, you can see the red bead, and it marks the first day of a woman's cycle. The color beads represent the days when pregnancy is highly unlikely, and the white beads represent days that pregnancy is likely, so those are the fertile days. Uh, there's also a monitor bead here, yellow, on the screen, and that helps a woman track her cycle length, and then she can use this information about her days to plan or prevent uh, pregnancy. Now let's take a look uh, at the schematic. Well, let's take a look at the three tools. So the schematic I've just shown is applied to three different tools. So a physical hands-on tool of cycle beads, an online service, and uh, mobile apps. And we'll talk about how cycle beads works and these uh, different tools later in the presentation. But let's take a look at what cycle beads is based on. Uh, the method that Cycle Beads is based on is called the Standard Days Method, and it's a fertility awareness-based method that works best for women who have menstrual cycles between 26 and 32 days long, which is most women, but it's not all women. Uh, the method identifies days 8 through 19 of a woman's cycle as her fertile days, and these are the days when there is a significant probability of getting pregnant. On all the other days, outside of the fertile days, pregnancy is highly unlikely. So to use the standard days method to prevent pregnancy, couples avoid unprotected sex during the 12-day window of days 8 through 19. Uh, let's see, Kimberly, so on those so fertile, on those fertile days, days, when the ring is on the white... Um, you didn't hear me talking, man. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yes. I, I was talking. <laughs> so on those fertile days when the ring is on a white bead, they would use a condom or other barrier method or abstain from intercourse. On the other days of the cycle, they can, use, they can have unprotected sex. Right. And then conversely, the same information can be used to plan a pregnancy. So the method helps a couple identify which days to target for intercourse. Now, the standard days method was researched and developed by the Institute for Reproductive Health at Georgetown University. The Institute conducted an efficacy study on the standard days method in multiple countries and published the results in the 2002 Journal of uh, Contraception. Uh, since the study, many other studies have been conducted around the world, and they've confirmed uh, the initial results. 
A couple of highlights from the efficacy study and subsequent studies have revealed that in terms of efficacy, the method is 95% effective in correct or perfect use and about 88% effective in typical use. The studies also showed that cycle beads also attracted women and couples not currently using another method of family planning. Often, women who don't desire pregnancy but are still, using, still not using contraception say they're concerned about side effects, they didn't think they could get pregnant at that time, or they were having infrequent sex. And cycle beads addresses these concerns. Right. Thanks, Kimberly, for mentioning that because there's uh, many different reasons that somebody might choose to use a natural method. Uh, but let's look at what the standard days method is based on. Uh, the method takes into account three biological facts. Uh, the first one on the part of the woman, the viable lifespan of the ovum or the egg is about 12 to 24 hours. On the part of the man, the potential life of the sperm in a woman's reproductive tract, so around the time of ovulation, is about five days. And then the fact that the timing of ovulation varies from cycle to cycle. So for these two, first two facts, the viable life of the ovum and the sperm combined, result in a woman being fertile approximately six days during her cycle. So you might be wondering, if a woman is only fertile for six days, why does the standard days method consider her at risk for pregnancy for 12 days? Well, of course, that's a good question. And the key is in regard to when these days occur and the fact that they vary from month to month and from woman to woman. So the Institute discovered that the six fertile days occur sometime between days 8 and 19 for women who normally have cycles that are 26 to 32 days long. And in determining this, researchers applied numerous formula to a large data set of thousands of menstrual cycles and found that for menstrual cycles between 26 and 32 days, this fixed fertile window of days 8 through 19 that you see there on the screen provided excellent coverage in terms of efficacy, yet minimized the number of days a couple would need to use a barrier method or abstain from sexual intercourse. Right, so the method encompasses as many women as possible and, as Kimberly just mentioned, keeps the window uh, as small as possible, too. So let's take a look here at efficacy in more detail. This table lists effective user-directed contraceptive methods. It does not include all the methods. Um, the provider-directed methods are not listed here, such as IUDs and implants. Uh, but we've listed here the common effective methods where action on the part of the user is required. And you can see how a cycle beat compares. Uh, with correct use, all of the methods are very effective, uh, with spermicides by, them by themselves uh, being less so. As you can see, cycle beads is more than 95% effective in correct use or perfect use. Uh, but in typical use, all the methods go down a bit. Uh, but here you can see that cycle beads still compares uh, quite well. 88% uh, uh, effective in typical use uh, compared with 91% to the pill and uh, the diaphragm uh, should be around 88. I think it's gone up to 88 now. Um, but as you can see, it compares very well to these other methods. Yes, and in addition to effectiveness, we know that there are other criteria that a woman may consider when choosing which method is best for her at a particular stage in her life. Other important criteria may include ease of use, possible side effects, existing medical conditions and cost, and the method that will work best for the woman is the one that she wants to use and is comfortable with, and most importantly, the method that she'll use uh, correctly and consistently over time. While all the scientifically tested fertility awareness-based methods are very effective when used correctly, many women have used their own version of a natural method of family planning, and often without, in, without correct information about the fertile time. So as a result, without the same effectiveness. Cycle beads are a really simple way to provide women with accurate information about fertility so that she can easily know which days she's likely to become pregnant. 
Right, and let's take a look uh, at some of the other benefits of cycle beats. We'd like to highlight some of those. First of all, we've been talking about uh, the standardized method and cycle beats were developed initially as a contraceptive method. But of course, you can plan pregnancy with it as well. Um, and in the U.S., uh, just for your information, about three quarters of cycle beats users uh, use it to prevent pregnancy, and about a quarter are using it to plan a pregnancy. Uh, effectiveness. Cycle beads are very effective uh, and they've been tested in well-designed efficacy trials. Uh, so the 95% correct use rate in preventing pregnancy is grounded in scientific evidence. The uh, method is natural and hormone-free, so therefore women don't have to worry about side effects. And again, referring to our surveys, uh, women have said that the, one of the main reasons they want a natural method is to avoid side effects and out of health concerns. And for providers, it's an easy method to teach, and for users, it's easy to use. And since it's easy to use, it's easy to use correctly, which uh, helps a woman keep the efficacy high. And finally, it's uh, not it's not expensive. Um, it is an over-the-counter product, so if a woman is buying it not at a clinic and perhaps online, it is a low cost. Uh, it's educational, so it's a handy tool to have uh, in your clinic or in your pocket uh, when you're teaching about fertility or the menstrual cycle. Uh, Kimberly, I know that you've used cycle beads um, for regular family planning counseling, but you've also used them uh, for other kinds of education. Yes, I've also used cycle beads for puberty education to teach girls as well as boys and their parents about the menstrual cycle and about fertility in general. Also, cycle beads can just be a really great trigger for conversation about these and other topics that are important to talk with between parents and their children. Yeah, and uh, being a good educational tool, that is a good segue into talking about counseling patients. So Kimberly and I will move on now and talk about how to counsel. Yes, and Anne, before we get into the details about counseling, I wanted to mention that cycle beads can be used without any counseling at all. Basically, a woman can buy the beads online or in a number of different product stores, and she can download the app or register online for the service and follow the instructions without any specific counseling by a provider. Right, that's a good point. Uh, as I just mentioned earlier, cycle beads is an over-the-counter method, uh, so women often purchase it themselves without even uh, consulting their healthcare provider. Um, and also, I'll just mention offhand that there are complete instructions uh, provided with cycle beads if that were the case. Yes, and for women who come into the health center or the clinic, and if she says that she wants something natural without side effects or hormones, that doesn't have any chem chemicals, she doesn't want to put anything into her body, she may not have heard of cycle beads and may not know to ask for this particular method. So offering counseling on cycle beads is a way to find out what a patient already knows about their own fertility and to provide in accurate information in an actionable way, something that she can use to plan or prevent pe pregnancy throughout the life course. So how do you counsel patients interested in cycle beats? Basically, there are three steps. First, you screen the patient, make sure that the method is appropriate for her and her partner. Next, you teach her or them, if he's present, how to use the method. And the third step is to counsel the woman and her partner on correct and consistent use. For screening, there are two main criteria. We want to find out whether the woman's cycle length appears to be 26 to 32 days long and whether the couple can avoid unprotected sex that is, use a berry method like condoms or avoid sexual intercourse during the days that a woman can get pregnant. And these, of course, are the white bee days or the fertile days on cycle beads. This is also a really good time to check in about protection against sexually transmitted infections, or STIs, and ask what the couple is doing to protect themselves. Knowing that the use of cycle beads, like other methods of family planning other than condoms, does not protect against sexually transmitted infections. As Anne mentioned earlier, most women have cycles between 26 and 32 days. 
Most women have cycles between 26 and 32 days long, but not all women. So it's important to assess whether this method is important, is, is appropriate for the individual woman. To do this, we find out if she has 26 to 32 day cycles by asking a few very simple questions to assess cycle length and regularity. That have been, and these questions have been tested and used in the various studies that we mentioned earlier and in uh, clinics here in the US very often. Basically, we find out, do her periods come about a month apart? So we ask, how often does your period come? Does your period come about once a month? Or you might say it a little bit differently. Do your periods come about a month apart? Does it usually come when you expect it? Now, most women can tell you whether or not their periods come about a month apart. She may need to hear that question asked a couple of different ways to understand exactly what you're asking about. But if she says, oh, I always get my period every 28 days, but not all the time, is that OK? Then if her period comes around a month apart, and even if it isn't exactly 28 days long, but still within that 26 to 32 day range, that's OK for using this method. However, if she says that she knows that she has a really long or really short cycle, he would advise her to use another method of family planning. That's because this method works best for women with 26 to 32 day cycles. And all of this can be assessed with a few simple questions. You don't need a cycle history, and you don't need to try to calculate precisely cycle length in the past or into the future. So in addition to asking a woman about her periods, it's also important to ask a few questions to help the woman and her partner think about whether this method will work for both of them. For example, like the question on the screen, you can ask something like, can you and your partner use a condom or another barrier method or abstain from sexual intercourse for 12 days in a row each month? This is influenced by their ability to communicate about sex about whether they'll have sex on a given day, and it's also about being in, in agreement regarding what they'll do on those fertile days to prevent pregnancy. So the idea is to help the woman and the couple to think about how using this particular method might fit or work within the context of their own relationship. Both the man and the woman need to be able to avoid unprotected sex on those fertile days, and this requires partner involvement and partner support and also having a plan or an approach that they both agree on. So asking about the couple relationship we know is not only relevant to a couple who's interested in cycle beads, but other methods of family planning. Because it helps the provider and the patient talk about method suitability for a particular woman and man with regard to the context of their intimate relationship. And many couples over the years that have, t have expressed that using cycle beads actually enhances their partner communication, and their relationship in general. A few questions you could ask to probe a little bit deeper about the couple experience include this one here. Have you talked about using this method with your partner? What would he think about it? You can also ask, how do you think you and your partner will avoid sex on those fertile days? And then depending on the answer, you would ask a few follow follow-up questions to explore their experience with those methods and um, whether they think this would work for them now. So if the woman and her partner plan to use condoms, you can ask, have you used them before? How did that work for you? Make sure she knows how to use condoms. And if they've abstained from sex previously, find out also how that has worked for them. Um, I just went over that one. So basically, we both partners need to be in sync when using uh, this couple-based method, this couple-based user-directed method. So let's assume that you just asked those screening questions that we talked about in terms of uh, assessing for cycle bay length within 26 to 32 day range. And when can this woman who meets the method criteria start using cycle beads? Well, if she knows the first day of her period, she can start using cycle beads right away. She can start using them today. She just enters the date her last period started in the online service or app, or she simply counts on a calendar or on the beads themselves to see which day of her cycle she's on right now and puts the ring on the corresponding bead. So if a woman does not remember the exact day that her last period started and she still meets the screening criteria, she can use cycle beads. It's just that rather than starting today, she needs to begin on the first day of her next period. 
and while she waits for her period to start, she can either use a berry method or abstain from intercourse. Let's look at a case here. Let's look at an example, number one, case number one, Ruth. Ruth comes into the clinic and it's September 30th. She knows that her first period started on September 24th. Ruth says she's very regular, her periods come each month, she gets them when she expects them, and she and her husband are both interested in a natural method of family planning. She's not breastfeeding and she's never used a hormonal method of family planning. So can Ruth start using cycle beads? Yes. And why? Well, according to this case, her periods come about a month apart, are within the range, and both she and her partner plan to use condoms on the days that she can get pregnant. So is it suitable for her to start using it? Yes, today. When can she, why can she start today? She knows the first day from her last period, so we can know we can move the ring to that day or input the date in the app, or uh, she can you know, calculate that through the on, online service. Anne, can you tell us what day of the menstrual cycle Ruth would be on? Well, let's see. If she started on September 24th, which uh, would be the first day of her cycle, it would be 24th, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. And if it were the 30th, uh, that's seven days. So she is on day seven of her menstrual cycle. Thanks, Anne. Yes. Ruth is on day seven, a colored beat. And tonight she and her partner can have unprotected sex. But tomorrow... Tomorrow starts day eight of her cycle, which is a white bead or a fertile day. So it's important then to talk to Ruth about how she and her partner will handle those next, that day, tomorrow, night, and the next 12 days, which are the days when pregnancy is likely. And then we would also want to counsel her on a few other points, such as making sure to enter the date online in the mobile app or place the ring on the correct bead, and to check to encourage her to discuss the method with her partner. Also, the other thing that we would do would be to show her how to monitor her cycle length over time, checking that she continues to be within the 26 to 32 day range. And I'll go over that in just a minute. But before I do, there are a few special circumstances in which we would want to ask a few additional questions to see whether the woman could start using uh, cycle beads today. And basically, um, this includes breastfeeding, breastfeeding and postpartum women, as well as those who have recently used a, a hormonal method of family planning, or someone who has had a miscarriage, abortion, or used EC, emergency contraception. So for a woman who is breastfeeding, or um, other postpartum women, she needs to wait until her periods return and become regular, and she's had four periods since the baby was born, and also that her last period was about a month apart, and then she can start using cycle beads. Now for the woman who is a recent hormonal method user, like she'd use the pill, the patch, the ring, the hormonal IUC, or the injection, or implant, um, she needs to wait until she's had three periods about a month apart, and that's two cycles. Now that, of course, is since she stops using the hormonal method of family planning. So if she was using the injection Depo-Provera, we know that that shot will provide her family planning protection for 90 days. So after the 90 days have passed you know, from her shot, then she needs to wait until she's had those three periods about a month apart. And then once this happens, she could start using cycle beads. So for a postpartum woman or a woman who's just uh, stopped using a hormonal method, if she is waiting to start cycle beads, she and her partner can either use a barrier method during that time or abstain. Now the other thing I did want to mention is that if a, if a woman has had a miscarriage or an abortion or if she's recently used emergency contraception, she can use cycle beads on the first day of her next period, that is if her periods were about a month apart, you know, up until this time. Right? You know, we ask those same uh, specific uh, questions about menstrual cycles. Yeah, and I just uh, wanted to mention here, Kimberly, that we do have a job aid or cue card, a cheat sheet, or however you want to call it, that's available uh, for download and printing. So this is a little bit detailed in this area, so um, if a provider wanted that, it is available. Thanks, Anne. Now let's look at a little bit uh, more at another case. This is Vicki, um, case number two. And we know that women interested in cycle beads um, from the research basically have stopped, often stopped their previously used method for a while before they come in looking for another method. But of course that isn't 
always the case. And if a woman does want to switch from a recent use of a hormonal method, like in this case the pill, we have some guidelines that we want to f uh, make sure to follow, which we, you know, I just mentioned. So let's look at this case of Vicki, and we see that she comes in. It's September 30th, and she knows that her last period started on September 25th. So she is on day six of her cycle. She stopped using oral contraceptives a little while ago, and after having stopped the pill, Vicki has had two periods that were about a month apart. Can Vicki start using cycle beads today? No, not yet. And why? Because it's, so far, she's only had two and not three periods since discontinuing her hormonal method. So when can she start using cycle beads? Basically, once she's had three periods post-pill, and they've been about a month apart, which is after she's had two cycles within that 26 to 32 day range. Okay, any questions about that, Anne? Does that seem clear to you? Well, if this woman were breastfeeding, instead of using a hormonal method, then we know that she would need to have at least four periods with the last two about a month apart. Okay, moving on. There are a few considerations that um, I w we want to talk about regarding couples. We know that in studies in the United States, India, and other countries around the world, couples that use cycle beads often report that it's positively influenced their couple relationship, and many have improved couple communication about sex. But you know, like all methods of family planning, cycle beads are not for everyone, and some couples don't see that positive impact, or they find that it just doesn't work for them. But issues to consider regarding the couple relationship and use of cycle beads are things that may influ influence their ability to use condoms or abstain from sexual intercourse on the days when the woman can get pregnant. And this, of course, would include their ability to communicate with one another about consent for sex. For example, whether the woman has the power to say no to unprotected sex um, during the days that she can conceive, and whether there's partner, uh, intimate partner violence within the relationship. Or if there's alcohol or substance abuse. This, of course, can affect the couple's motivation or ability to use a method like this where you either avoid, where you avoid unprotected sex by using condoms or um, abstaining from sex. And um, issues regarding alcohol, substance abuse, etc., also come into play with other user-directed methods. So if, con if cycle beads are not well suited for the woman, or the man, or both, uh, they of course can decide to use something else. There are many other methods of family planning to choose from, including fertility environment space or natural methods. But options are really important for providing the best method for the individual, the person, you know, as well as the couple at that stage of their lives and in concert with the dynamics of their particular relationship. So moving on from assessing whether this method looks like it'll work well for the individual woman and, the par and her partner, we want to make sure to teach the, the let's say yes, they, they do want to use this method and we're teaching the patient how to use the method. After screening, there's some things that we can do to really make sure that she knows how to use the method uh, correctly and consistently. It's really helpful if you're using cycle beads, the physical beads, like in this picture here, or the laptop, uh, use a laptop if you're showing the service online, or a mobile phone if you're showing how to use that app, to use a physical tool um, as a tactile, concrete way a visual aid to describe how to use cycle beads. And then after demonstrating how to use the method, ask the woman or the couple to do a return demonstration and to show you how they would use the method. You can also ask some key questions to help confirm that learning and uh, comprehension have taken place. Now what I'd like to do next is to show you how I might use the physical cycle beads and this tool here, how do you use cycle beads, which is one of the tools that are available, to describe to a woman how this method works. So um, imagine I have the cycle beads in my hand, which you can use, or this tool here, and you would say something like this. Okay, on the first day of bleeding, put the ring on the red bead. Then also on that first day of bleeding, mark that day on your calendar. That way, if you forget to move the ring, you can always check to make sure it's on the right bead. To use the method, you move the ring one bead each day in the direction of the arrow. And when the ring is on this red or any of the darker beads, this is a day when pregnancy is very unlikely. 
But then when the ring gets to any one of the white beads, this is the day that the woman can become pregnant and the couple would need to either use condoms, a bar other barrier method, or abstain from sexual intercourse. Then um, you come to the, the beads that are of color, uh, the, these dark colored beads. When the ring is on any one of these beads, this is the day when pregnancy is very unlikely and the couple may have unprotected sex. Then um, the, um, in a, one gets to the red bead again, I mean, I'm sorry, then one gets their period, and once you get your period, you skip over any of the remaining beads and put the ring on the red bead to start a new cycle. Now, I did want to mention a little bit about how do you keep track of cycle length over time, um, especially with the physical beads. We know that the app and the online service do this for you, but here we have a big you know, a visual of the beads, and you can see that you move the ring one bead each day in the direction of the arrow, and there's this darker bead here. And this helps the woman know whether her uh, periods are within this 26 to 32 day range. So if her period were to come before that dark bead, that would be a long cycle. Or if the period didn't come by the day after the last bead, that would be a long cycle. I think I said that backwards, Anne. Let me start this over again. Right. Yeah, I think it's a short one bead. first. <laughs> okay, yes. And so when she gets to the dark brown bead, if she had her period before that, that would be a short cycle. And if she didn't get her period by the day after the last bead, that would be a long cycle, more than 32 days. So if she has had a, a more than one uh, cycle that's uh, too short or too long, then she would know to come back and check out other methods of family planning. But the reason I bring this up with the physical beads is that dark brown bead is a marker. It helps her keep track to make sure that her cycles are long enough to use cycle beads, and that last bead helps her make sure that um, she's got her period within that 32-day range. Any other comments you wanted to add to that, Anne? Uh, no, just um, I wanted to go on about uh, you had mentioned the physical beads, and if we look here, there's the other two tools, which I won't talk too much about, um, but there's the Cycle Beads online service, uh, which is an internet-based service, uh, meaning that a woman can use it from any device that has an internet connection. Um, it's not local on the device. And then there's the mobile apps uh, for Apple and Android, um, can be used with a uh, smartphone, uh, tablet, etc. So both of them work in a very similar way, basically entering the date, uh, the app calculates, or it doesn't calculate, but it applies the uh, formula of the standard days method and shows a woman uh, where she is in a cycle. Uh, just uh, real quickly, a couple special features that uh, women and also providers like is that there are key day notifications, um, letting a woman know when she's entering her fertile window, when she's exiting her fertile window, and so on. Uh, there's either an email notification for the online service or an an alert from the phone, a smartphone notification. Uh, there's also a cycle history for keeping track of uh, your cycle, previous cycles, and a notes feature for any kind of pertinent information. Uh, finally, just real quickly for healthcare providers, if you're interested in uh, giving your patient a trial, you can sign someone up directly for a 60-day trial, um, and we'll show you how to contact us to get that capability. Uh, but that's all I wanted to mention was just the other two ways uh, to use cycle beads, Kimberly. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Anne. And just to recap on teaching, uh, it's a very good idea in terms of if you're just beginning to offer cycle beads to practice how you would offer it, either to, with a colleague or in, in a mirror or just on your own, to make sure that you're using very simple words to explain the information. And this is particularly helpful if you're offering the method in a language other than English. Um, there are a lot of materials available in Spanish and in, and in other languages as well, so that to make sure that you're using common terms that are used in the support information that goes along with the cycle beads. And as mentioned earlier, asking patients to explain back is a really good way to determine whether the instructions that you've provided make sense and are clear and to uh, confirm that comprehension and learning has taken place, um, whether it's using the physical beads uh, or the online service or the, um, or the app from the mobile phone.
And then the one other thing I did want to mention is uh, supporting both new and continuing users. After counseling a woman or a couple on cycle beads, it's really important to support um, both the new and the continuing user. And for the new user, we want to, at the end of a counseling session, to review getting started uh, with cycle beads, how to use it, how to use it with your partner, and discuss their plan for how they will prevent pregnancy on the fertile days. And then in addition to that, some tips about some supporting the couple. You can talk about uh, how the couple will communicate their the woman's fertility status and how the male partner might be involved. Um, it, some men may mark the calendar for the woman on the first day of bleeding. They might move the ring. Uh, some couples look at the ring, look at their cycle beads, whether it's the physical ones or the app or the online service, and know when the fertile time is coming and particularly target those non-fertile days for intercourse. So they might have sex more often on the days where pregnancy, the likelihood of getting pregnant is very, very small. And so you can share those tips and, and different ways of pleasuring during the fertile time, etc. Just to have a, that kind of a conversation. Then when a, a cycle beads user comes back for whatever reason to that clinic or, or health center, you can check to see how using cycle beads has worked for them and to make sure that they're satisfied with the method and using it correctly. Now in terms of follow-up, a follow-up visit isn't required for this method, but it's really important to, as I mentioned earlier, check in with the user when they come back to see how it's going. Also, when someone is leaving with cycle beads for the first time, we want to make sure that she knows when to come back um, or when to call and check in. For example, if she's had unprotected sex on a white bead day or having difficulty handling those fertile days, we want to provide information about access to emergency contra contraception, um, as with other user-directed methods, and offer suggestions for handling the fertile days, or provide information about other methods if this method isn't working for them. If she has cycles that are too short or too long, more than once in a year, offer her other method options. And the other point would be if she hasn't gotten her period and thinks that she may be pregnant, to offer pregnancy testing and counseling as needed. And of course, if she comes in or calls or would like to use another method, to provide other method options for her. Well, thanks, Kimberly. I think that that's really all the basic points about counseling patients. Uh, something I wanted to mention uh, is regard to feedback that we get from women who have used cycle beads. And I think it's interesting uh, for providers to be aware of some of the things that we hear and the most maybe one of the most common things we hear is why didn't someone tell me about this before and this doesn't necessarily mean about cycle beads or using cycle beads per se but women are very interested in the information that they convey and about when a woman is fertile and not fertile and also the fact that a woman cannot get pregnant just any day during the month and it's a common misperception by a number of women and they're very surprised to hear that especially when they start tracking their cycles uh, with cycle beads and learning uh, their pattern and so on and then of course uh, many women uh, enjoy that there are no side effects which is a very common comment that we hear as well so finally we would like to give you some links to resources so handy things to look up uh, if you are a healthcare provider, there is the CycleBeads integration guide that you can find at the CycleBeadsToolkit.com. Um, if you need brochures, uh, you can contact us directly. We'll give you that information soon uh, or directly. And then there's things like uh, posters that you could have in your, in your clinic. Uh, detailed information is listed at cyclebeads.com, which is good for providers, but also for um, your patients if you want to direct them to a site for understandable uh, layman speak information. And well, here, uh, Kimberly, did you have a comment about? Oh, I was just going to say that some of these tools are really particularly help, helpful when a clinician, a nurse, a community health worker, or even a medical assistant are just learning to offer cycle beats because they can help provide really helpful reminders to make sure you cover all the key information. And this way, all the staff at a site are trained, and the tool helps to ensure consistent and standardized messages uh, that that everyone provides the same, you know, uh, key messages to all patients. 
patients. All right, let me go back to that slide one more time. For the Cycle Beads Toolkit, I had mentioned earlier a cue card. Uh, Kimberly was explaining about the different situations. Um, if someone had just finished breastfeeding or is coming off hormonal contraception, uh, the steps to follow. Um, and that cue card is listed in the Cycle Beads Toolkit. So CycleBeadsToolkit.com, that's where that can be found. Um, if you have any information or any <laughs> questions, please do contact us. Uh, here are our phone numbers. Uh, you can email us. It's a very good way to get a hold of us. Uh, providers at CycleBeads.com. The website again, CycleBeads.com. And the site, as I mentioned before, has information for both providers and laypersons. And this is also where um, your client or your patient would purchase CycleBeads online. There is the online shop or they can also sign up for the online service uh, that Kimberly has been talking about as well. Um, as I mentioned, the toolkit uh, is available. There's a screening uh, checklist on the toolkit as well. Now, uh, we've come to the end of the presentation. If you have questions again, uh, call. Uh, or email. Uh, thank you very much for your interest and for viewing this training. Uh, please let your colleagues know about it too. And please also take a look at the other EDU series presentations and stay tuned for our future presentations and live events on the topics of family planning and reproductive health. Uh, we will send announcements through email, so if you're not already on our announcements list, uh, please send a request to the email address there, providers at cyclebeads.com. Uh, we also post announcements on Facebook and Twitter, so please follow us to keep up on the latest. So this is Ann Mullen with Kimberly Omaki saying thank you and goodbye. Goodbye.